Unlike other arena fighters on the market, <laughs> This game is designed with a deep love and passion for Dragon Ball. Because of this, the combat and combo systems are extremely intricate and complex. If you want to be good at this game on a fundamental level, the first step is to understand the combat system. However, understanding the basics of the combo system is not the easiest thing to do. To start, the base moveset consists of a 5 hit combo called Rush Attacks. The 5 hit combo ends in a staggering hit that would typically stagger bigger enemies such as Great Apes. Each one of these rush attacks can be held down to perform a charge attack. These charge attacks have different properties. A slightly charged rush attack will stagger the opponent and reset them to neutral, allowing you to continue your combo. A medium charge rush attack will send the opponent flying in a spin, allowing you to combo into a super attack or regroup. A fully charged rush attack will send the opponent flying, leading to a full rush combo. Rush combos consist of three buttons, X, Circle, and Triangle. Each one of these buttons do different things when in a rush combo. X will track your opponent and pressing square will continue the rush combo. Triangle will teleport you behind your opponent and continue the rush combo. Circle will end your rush combo. You only have three attacks during a rush combo, so use them wisely. Ideally, you can use X to dash in, then square to continue the combo. Then press triangle for a second hit before immediately pressing triangle to end the combo. But doing these rush combos will always reset the opponent to neutral and end said rush combo. If you want to do more damage, you'll have to implement smash attacks. After each rush attack, you can press the alternate attack button, which is typically triangle or Y and do a smash attack. Each character has a different combination of smash attacks, all of which are ultimately the same 6 smash attacks, but each are used in different ways. For instance, look at Goku. Base Super Goku has three different smash attacks, Heavy Finish, Ki Eye Cannon, and Triple Hit. These smash attacks come out in different combinations of buttons. One square into Triangle leads to Heavy Finish. Two squares into Triangle leads to Ki Eye Cannon. Three squares into Triangle leads to Triple Hit. Using the same smash attack twice in one combo will automatically send the opponent flying meaning the most optimal way to use these combos would be to use each smash attack at least once. However, with all the defensive options available to you, this is unlikely to happen. This is where the first fundamental comes into play. Be unpredictable to them, or but for short. Use your butt to constantly change up your fighting style when attacking. This will ensure that your opponent will never be able to keep constant track of your movement and counter you. Understanding the properties of each type of smash attack is important to your butt as well. Heavy finishers stagger the enemy for a long time. When fully held, it will break the opponent's guard, but can be easily sidestepped. Ki Eye Cannon breaks the opponent's guard, and will send them flying if fully charged, but it can also be sidestepped. Triple Hit staggers any non-giant enemy, but can be blocked by anyone using the up block mechanic. However, this move is one of the fastest moves in most characters' arsenal and you maintain combo pressure even if the opponent blocks said attack. Ki Explosion breaks the opponent's guard and cannot be sidestepped, however unless fully charged, this move can be blocked. Blast Knockback sends the opponent flying, leading to an easy super setup that can only be vanished away from. However this is also the easiest attack to dodge, and can also be blocked. The Turnaround Punch turns your opponent around which is a place that they definitely do not want to be. This move happens extremely fast but can be blocked in any direction and sidestepped. If your butt is properly used in tandem with the variable attack combos, someone like Goku becomes a nightmare to deal with. Your butt allows him to wipe the floor with his opponent, covering them with mix-ups and leaving a strong stench of fear. So keep your butt in mind if you want to learn how to be good at Sparking Zero. Sparking Zero isn't just as simple as 30 to 40 different combinations and endless strings of ridiculous combo damage. There are still many variables to add into your butt to pump it full of possibilities, like the low sweep attack that can only be finished or dodged by a low block, or the high kick that can only be dodged by a high block. Each one of these options lead to a different follow-up using a different combination. Like for instance, doing a sweep attack can lead to you holding the rush attack button and doing a rush combo, or doing the high kick and then pressing X which will elevate your character to the same level as your opponent and you can continue the combo. Both of these things will increase your overall combo damage. Doing one of these techniques is what I like to call precisely laying out a unique game plan, or plug.
Your plug is not something that has to be thought of beforehand, but instead can be applied on the fly to make insane combos, like a basic rush attack string into a sweep leading to a rush combo. However, the real damaging combos of this game comes when you combine your butt with your plug. Your butt plug will allow you to make devastating combos on the fly, leading to insane damage numbers that will be extremely difficult for your opponent to counteract, like doing a rush attack string into a slightly charged rush attack, followed by another rush attack string into a heavy finish. Continue that with a sweep attack into a fully charged rush attack and finish it off with a rush combo. You see how you can get insanely devastating combos? This is all without even using the rush in technique, which allows you to get a full rush string without breaking your combo. Make sure to keep your butt in mind and plug it up to apply a world of possibilities within the combo system. Because knowing the fundamentals of the combo system is the only way for you to know how to be good at sparking zero. Defense is arguably even more important than offense in a game like Sparking Zero. Controlling your opponent's actions and understanding their limits is the key to winning consistently. And the first thing that you should understand is that movement is unbelievably good. Unlike in other games where you can't spot dodge, this game has a ridiculously good spot dodge mechanic, allowing you to spot dodge almost any attack besides rush attacks and blast supers. Seriously, try it out yourself. When timed correctly, you can even dodge rush supers with the spot dodge mechanic. To do this, press the X button in any direction before the impact of the attack. Pressing circle right as you perform the dodge will allow you to do a special spot dodge that will extend your dodge duration, making it easier to time. You can also immediately combo this dodge into another, chaining your evasion together and circling your opponent. Rush attacks will typically take you right out of this dodge though, so be careful. The second most effective technique is blocking. Blocking reduces all incoming damage and prevents you from staggering. However, it's not really very reliable against anything other than supers. This is because you can block in three different directions, top, middle, and bottom. However, enemies can still break this block with multiple different attacks, as well as attack you from behind with ease. The third most effective technique is perception. By clicking the circle and triangle button at the same time, you will activate perception. This is the iconic Sonic Sway technique. If done before the opponent attacks by holding down the input, you will do a counter unique to your character. The perception mechanic has also been updated to allow the player to even deflect blasts and cause cinematic explosions against blast attacks. You can also use it as a counter to the get off me move revenge counter. However, doing these things costs two blast stocks and it also only works when the opponent is directly in front of you. Perception is also especially useful in midair as when using the sonic sway move, holding down the left stick and pressing triangle will send your opponent flying, which will trigger a rush combo. This means that anytime you catch an opponent with sonic sway in the air, you can guarantee a full combo by following it up. However, the most important defensive option you have is the Z counter. Z counters will happen when you press circle button or forward square right as an attack is about to hit you. Notice that I said forward square. While you can do a block Z counter while holding forward and pressing square, the timing is a lot less reliable than moving the left stick forward and pressing square at the exact same time. A Z counter is by far the best way to defend against attacks in this game. Z counters work against every single attack in the game and will always lead to a counter attack as long as you have key. However, because of this, Z counters are extremely difficult to pull off, requiring practically frame perfect precision to do so. However, there is a secret to these Z counters that may give you the edge in combat. Be observant of behaviors, or boop. By keeping in a close eye on your opponent's boobs, you will be able to properly apply Z counters and use your butt to take them down. For instance, recognizing that someone always goes for the rush in combo gives you a clear window to attempt the Z counter, greatly increasing your chances of pulling it off. Rush attacks in general are great candidates for your typical block Z counter, 
as basic rush attacks can only be stopped using revenge counter and Z counter. What I'm saying doesn't make it easy to do said Z counters, but spamming the Z counter button randomly is a much worse option and typically not as reliable. However, even if you cannot properly pull off Z counters during a match, Sparking Zero allows you to use the revenge counter by spending one of your blast stocks and striking the opponent back. This will reset the fight back to neutral and do a small amount of damage to your opponent. However, if you're looking to stop a revenge counter user, you can also use super perception as well as Z countering their counter to continue your own combo. Paying close attention to your opponent's boobs will allow you to notice trends in their movements and easily Z counter out of all of their attacks, as well as knowing when to use your spot dodge and block supers giving you a remarkable edge against your enemy. As long as you can grab and stop your opponent's boobs in their tracks, you are on the right path to knowing how to be good at sparking zero. Movement is a crucial component to victory in fast-paced games like Sparking Zero. Outpacing your opponent and keeping control of the fight is key to consistently winning matches. And the first thing to understand is the difference between close range and long range. In Sparking Zero, there are two states of movement your character can be in, close range and long range. Close range results in a slower movement speed as well as a unique step-in dash mechanic. This step-in dash can be used in any direction and is your best way to maneuver around your opponent. When close, using the step-in dash to the left or right will pivot you around your opponent, allowing you to get in a better position. An important thing to remember is that the step-in dash also has two effective ranges. One when you're right directly in front of the opponent, and the second when you're a little distance away from your opponent. In this second effective range, this is the range that you can easily spot dodge rush supers, smash attacks, and charge rush attacks. But regular rush attack strings will always take you out of this range. Not to mention, when you're in this sort of medium range area, it will take you two consecutive dodges to get behind your opponent, not just the single one that you see in this closer range. This step in dash is also extremely helpful in defense, allowing you to dodge smash attacks consistently as well as spot dodge rush supers. However, the step in dash is not perfect. In fact, blast supers are typically a huge counter to this movement technique, as the blast size will typically make your short dashing range unimportant. When at longer ranges, the step in dash changes to a short dash, allowing you to quickly get a burst of speed in any direction. This is great for avoiding supers and vanishing assaults, but this technique lacks the more precise nature that the close range step in dash gives, making it more suited to close the distance while also keeping yourself safe. Luckily, you can switch between the long and short range dashes by using the ascend or descend feature. This will allow you to change your height and more importantly, take you out of close range to allow you to use the short dash to gain distance. Knowing when to stay close to your opponent for the step in and when to ascend to use the short dash will be an important key to victory in Sparking Zero. Another important key is understanding the Z burst dash. While pressing X and L2 at the same time, your character will perform a Z dash. This will allow you to move at a fast pace while burning key to maintain this fast state. This is useful for closing the distance on your opponent before they get a chance to react, as pressing these buttons without moving the left stick will send you at your opponent at top speeds. Pressing this button twice in rapid succession will send you behind them for a surprise attack. The Vanishing Assault is another new addition, and it can be used at multiple distances to strike your opponent. Close range being a back shot that sends your opponent flying, mid range being a forward attack that staggers your opponent, and long range being a vanish that keeps you in place and does not attack your opponent. There are also advanced techniques that can be applied, like rapid movement. If you press circle in any direction during a rush combo, you can vanish around or away from your opponent. This can allow you to attack from multiple different angles while still being in a combo. Rapid movement is a lot easier to use than it looks. There's four directions that you can vanish in, forward, left, right, and backwards. Each one will put you at a different spot according to your opponent. And remember that statement, you'll always be standing according to where your opponent currently is. Not to mention you don't have to actually hit your opponent to activate rapid movement. It just requires you to use a single rush attack and then press circle directly after 
while moving your left stick in whichever direction that you choose. However, your opponent can react to this vanish with a vanish of their own. With a basic understanding of the movement mechanics, a clear system will emerge that I like to call jumping over bodies, or job. Your job is easily done with the fast paced movement and powerful ascend slash descend mechanics in place. Quickly ascending before an opponent does an attack, then pressing the vanishing attack can stagger them and give you the clear advantage in a fight, as well as stepping in just as they do a smash attack just to follow up with a smash attack of your own. This is why keeping a close eye on your opponent's boobs is imperative to being successful. If you can carefully watch their boobs while doing your job with vanishing attacks and step in dodges, their boob job will be completely ineffective on you, giving you free reign to apply your butt plug and place them on the defense. Properly doing your job while understanding the space between you and your opponent is extremely important if you want to know how to be good at sparking hero.